Hello everyone and welcome back to Dematic. Now with a working microphone. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Audio is tested. We are good to go. I'm so glad I did listen to see if I could actually hear myself. It's been a while. It's been a busy week. A lot of stuff's been going on, finishing up school for the year. Um, and then, of course, spending some time with family and a little bit before summer school starts. Uh, yeah, been going around doing stuff. Uh, saw Shin Kamen Rider in theaters. I actually just got done recording a little bit about that. Uh, kind of a rambly mess, so I'm going to have to edit it down quite a bit. Um, and I know I've got a little bit of gaming ADHD, jumping around to different things. Um, but I'm just trying to keep a variety because I've got a lot of things. I've got a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. And I don't know, I've just sort of been jumping around because I want to find one that I feel comfortable just continuing on and plowing through. Uh, probably the furthest along one I've got right now would have to be today's game which would be Alan Wake Remastered. As you might have heard in my previous episode where I played a little bit of Control, I am slowly but surely becoming a huge Remedy fan uh, after initially seeing Max Payne when it first came out at my cousin's and now experiencing some of my own Remedy games. I've previously beaten Control, not both of the DLCs, um, and I just recently started up Alan Wake back probably January or February. Um, so it's been a little bit since I last played Alan Wake. Um, as far as I know, I'm visiting a trailer park. So that is just about where I think I remember it being. Uh, so we might as well get hopped into it. Uh, and we'll talk about things. So let us switch over to PS5 cap. Never mind, not PS5 cap. I mean, that would work, but why do that when I've got a perfectly good Alan Wake overlay? <laughs> Which is where we're gonna pop in over here. I'm gonna see if I can bring down my chat over here. That might be a little bit better. And I think we're going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over my screen. Over to this one. There we go. All right. I'm going to move my keyboard out of the way. There we go. PS5 controller in hand. And let us... Take a trip back to Bright Falls. I always thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. All right, very intriguing. I recognize Thomas Zane's name from Control. Do, 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 do. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Some kind of breakdown. 
Yep, if you didn't already get it, there's lots of Twin Peaks vibes in here. I'm a huge fan of that show, so... I enjoy all the little bits. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, I was wondering it. What? I don't know if I'm supposed to just see her standing there. Kind of creepy. <laughs> they played footstep sounds. I could just see her through the slats. Oh dear, Mr. Wake, I'm I'm so glad you're here. Uh... Oh. Oh. Oh yes. Yes. What's with that Please room back there? Up. This is really good. A damn fine cup Rose. of coffee. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. Uh-oh. Barry! What? What? No, anti-coffee. It puts you to sleep. It's coming for you. Hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. Oh, you God. must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. Uh, hello. Back to work, boy. Okay. I nauseous, hung over. Only I was right. <clears throat> Some sort of weird shrine. I don't dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do. About the complex incantation I'm attempting. About this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. He feels it coming, I guess. Oh, that's just weird. Why do you have, like, a mobile? You're, like, an adult lady. Like, it makes sense. Okay, sure, you got pictures of Alan Wake. A little creepy. But, like, why the mobile? And why is she reading a book about web metrics? <laughs> Good father, bad father. I'm always interested in seeing what sort of random books they use to populate video games. Oh, jeez, Barry. Day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Huh. There's something very familiar about this place. I just saw there's a video they posted about... Uh, an official oh dear thermos like that's kind of tempting welcome to the oh dear diner what oh dear. can we get you today coffee i couldn't work up much hate for rose something had used her to get to me and left its mark first you fill your tree milk and sugar on the counter now would you like to hear today's specials 
Thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. Yeah, I mean, basically, that's what the service industry will do, yeah. <laughs> My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Very manuscript. <clears throat> Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Oh boy. So I'm something of a writer myself, so I've definitely come to enjoy uh, Alan's character and everything. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. And it makes sense that he would want to lock himself away and do some writing <clears throat> away from the world. Or in this case, he didn't want to do any writing because it was stuck and his wife was going to force him, which... Kind of a bad move on her part too. I get what she was trying to do, but that's that's not exactly to help the situation. That and having him see uh, the doctor, which I do know the doctor shows up in uh, control and is not exactly a nice guy. Oh, audio. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well... Sound like a man with a problem, Walt. I was like, what is that? Is that actually a song or what? Oh, okay. So you can run over here and there's not really anything over here. Alright, I'm just trying to explore. I, I do like that they do a lot of world building and exposition with audio and also with the manuscripts. trying to remember the rest of the controls for when I do get into combat. I kind of feel it's a double-edged sword, how everything resets in between each episode, but it makes sense. Although the story is serialized, they treat it episodically. You gotta start fresh each time.
I also do like that there's credits at the end and then a next time and everything. Super cool. And I do like the fact that you can switch between right and left shoulder view. That can be quite helpful. Huh. Oh, there's the guy. Oh, you're gonna get it now. Uh oh. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Blaine. What the heck? Just throwing out all sorts of riders? I will say Spillane would be a more accurate description for him. At least with Spillane. I need to leave Barry behind, but there it's... was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Oh no! A stealth mission? Oh yeah, I don't. Wait, I was supposed to go the other way. Oh. I should have looked at the meeting map. But geez, I'm like, why is the FBI here? Like, this is way more intense than just calling the sheriff. Oh, what? What? <laughs> I don't get it. Was there like a sniper or something? I guess I'll just follow the path this time. Because I at least know I need to go to the yellow dot now. I was gonna say it's an interesting juxtaposition, like, uh, like normally you're trying to stay in the light and shine the light and everything, and now here you. Uh, and now you're trying to stay in the shadows. I mean, it seems pretty on the nose, but I think that's something that uh, Remedy does well, is they're taking something that would otherwise be just very on the nose and like, oh yeah, obviously they're going to do that, and turns it into something that is still compelling. For decades... The darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. 
The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the rider on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Interesting. Okay, giving a bit more of the backstory of the dark presence. Oh, the wind's blowing. That means we're going to get some crazy stuff. Oh, snaps. All right, officer, do you have a weapon for me? All right, checkpoint. Drop hazard, sure. Wind's picking up again. The wind is howling. Oh, what is that indeed? Oh. Teasing me with a checkpoint. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Okay, free checkpoint without a lamp. They're really calling out, or bringing out all the stops, rather. Oh, no! They're getting chased by the crows! Now, they certainly can't blame that on me. <laughs> All right, Edgar Allan Poe. Calling your flock of ravens. Yeah, I'm going to look in here first. Uh, this is Jane, Mulligan, Thornton, come in, over! Uh, Thornton here, uh, Jane, we got both Wheeler and Rose in custody. <laughs> they didn't put up a fight or anything. Why, they were just, hey, what, what you, come on! Sit down and give me that. Jane, Mulligan here, over. Uh, go ahead, Mulligan, over! Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whip of old of scotch about him, you know what I mean? Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in and take a look at both. Over. Gotcha. You better get them here quickly. The, uh, fed's gonna want to interview Wheeler, over. Oh yeah, I'll bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Mulligan out. Okay. There we go. Now I'll use the Knox. X to toggle zoom. That is a very quick. Zoom or move around, I guess. All right, what about over here? I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. Oh, yeah, wasn't that where I was supposed to try and get to? 
five fold r r radio. Oh, okay. The radio station and then the actual radio tower. That makes sense. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. I mean, you've got a whole bunch of the feds. Oh, God. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without it. Or you could easily just climb over the fence, but okay. Thermos. Alright, is there anything over here for me? Oh, I see. Oops. Start the generator. Click. There we go. Now I should be able to turn on that light. Oh, I guess it's already on. Wait, what's that? Just sparks, I guess. The old generator conked out. I'd have to see if I could fix it and try again. Okay. Oh, kick it. Okay. That's certainly a weird way to conk out, I guess. Alright. I didn't think I could boost it. <laughs> Turns out you can. Checkpoint, excellent. Oh no, more blocking the fence. Whoa! I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh hey, actual flashlight. Oh boy. On the one hand, I appreciate the fact that, like, wherever you point, you know, it points the flashlight there. But it can be a bit tricky to actually see. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. All the flashbangs. Yeah, honestly, I would love to play a detective game. Oh, God. Where you basically point around flashlight like this then you've got your revolver and everything and you're investigating that would be pretty legit oh crap i forgot they can come from wherever just keep running for the light Ah, uh, can't get me. And I hardly used any of my flashbangs. Far out. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. 
Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Live from a pistol. Gotta get over there before he talks to the cops. Okay. I didn't think it would work like that. That was like an instant flashbang detonation. Oh, I see. Really? Fine. So the first area wasn't too bad, but now I'm like... Running into all sorts. Kind of amazed that that's still working. Oh, come on. Run. Run! We got to go! Still had two flashbangs left, that's good. Ah! <laughs> Okay, as I was saying, still had two flashbangs left. Now I've got none. Lend me a car to get to the coal mine. I can't believe it. It's a, that was exactly how many I needed. All right, let's go ahead and head back over here to see how Rhode Island is doing. Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Nowhere to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't really? Dan Brown, too? Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. Judas Priest. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. Who uses Judas Priest as an <laughs> exclamation? It's just so strange. Okay. Fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free. 
marched out, his cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. Okay. There's the train depot. Alright, flares. That's better than nothing. Alright, there's a few things up there. Oh, good. Okay. Better. Yeah, just get moving, please. Oh, come on. There we go. Ooh, safety. Okay, I'm glad I have a weapon now. I've got shotgun ammo, but no shotgun. Ten pistol rounds. I'll have to make it work. Boy. Okay, <sighs> five rounds. sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Yay, more rounds. Alright, now we've got a shotgun and shotgun rounds. Still got quite a few shoddy rounds. Lithium batteries are out. I guess we'll keep on moving. Got plenty of ammo and plenty of batteries now. Let's keep on heading towards the light. That's all we gotta do. Nice your page. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. <laughs> smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? 
He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Give me one second here. Gotta look up a password because evidently I forgot what it was. Nope, not that one. Nope, not that one. Hmm. Oh, not there. Gosh, I don't know. How am I totally spacing? Gosh, would it be under Chrome? I don't know why I'm having such a t tough time recalling. Password. There we go. Now that I know it, it jumps right in. All right, federal business, eh? Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think it's just because it's one of those Saturday. All right. Really must be a big battle coming. Fun. Yeah. Don't you just hate it when you cannot remember? Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. Something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. And another manuscript page. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Oh boy, okay. So I'm I gonna see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. So the metal pipe is gonna be a boss fight. Oh snaps, I thought it was gonna fall off the edge there. 15 batteries as well. So they're really expecting me to get into a good fight. Ooh. 
with explosive barrels? Whoa. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Oh, oh no. Ow. Ow. I'm starting to question whether I'm supposed to defeat these or just escape. Okay, I did do the right thing. Still gave me a ton of ammo, so I'm assuming I'm about to Oh my god! What now? Attack of the killer barrel. Manuscript page. Array. 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 I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. <gasps> the White Lodge or the Black Lodge? <laughs> As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was getting closer. What? Now what's the difference between the flashlight and the heavy duty flashlight? Doesn't seem to run out any quicker. Just more powerful, I guess. I can dig it. More revolver ammo. Oh boy. This is going to be a big battle if they're giving me so much. 15 batteries, a heavy duty flashlight, revolver, 14 shotgun rounds. Ah, ah. Ah. Ow. Okay, I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to get out of that situation there. Good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was getting closer. Alright, we're actually gonna go with the pistol this time. A flare would be nice. See if I can't pick up a few things around here before the fighting starts. Thermos. Thermos and the jets. 
All right. Well, the fact that I now have a flare should help me. Ow. There we go. Keep on moving, Alan. Oh, I guess I gotta go in. Evidently, there's going to be more action than I anticipated. Oh, in light, you can hurt them. So I guess that's somebody else who's recognizing the situation. Please do not recycle. Alright, more flares. More handgun ammo, more lithium batteries. Geez, almost 20 batteries. <sighs> Nothing less to on the radio. All right. Little shotgun shells. Let's go. Oh, manuscript page. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Okay. Oh! This is a big full-on arena. I'm sorry, what? Oh, crap. Oh crap! Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I didn't think I needed to use anything intense yet. But now I'm partly tempted to Flare it up. Ah. Uh. Ow. Okay. All right. Recalculating. <laughs> Well, 
evidently it sounds like I made the right choice. As long as there's no more crazy equipment, then I should be fine. I don't remember if there was a difficulty setting. So I don't know if I'm playing on like easy mode. <laughs> it's It's been long enough that I don't remember, but... Item limit reached, sure thing. Um, but even if I am on easy mode, like, I'm here for the story in this particular case. And yeah, I too am interested in uh, the works of Stephen King, uh, especially his book On Writing. That was a very eye-opening piece. Um, and growing up, like, I did not have the appreciation for Stephen King that I do now. I am very much a big fan of his. But yes, very, very many inanimate objects come to life. I have been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. Ooh, frame rate drops. The coal mine wasn't far now. The coal yours? No, the Today, coal mine. I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. I'm surprised it's not the end of the episode yet or something. I will say this is very peaceful, and I'd give anything to just take a moment to just sit and listen to the tranquility of the forest. Birds chirping, winds through the trees. So calming. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. Please let me back up. Okay. I, I knew I had gone down the wrong path, and I was like, all right, I'll hop back on right before the end. Didn't want to get all the way out and fall. I will say the remaster did a pretty good job making the game look good. Good 60 FPS, which unfortunately you guys don't get to see <laughs> with my current capture setup. Oh, far out. Whew. The, the car is definitely PS3 jank, that's for sure. Yeah, the handling on this is awful. Even the engine does not sound believable. Have I made a loop? Oh no, I'm just on the other side here. Okay. Whoa.
Yeah, I find it interesting, like, when your game is not exactly focused on vehicles, but you add a vehicle in there, it's almost always terrible to handle. It's like, you don't have to necessarily be specializing in vehicles to do a vehicle right in the game. Like, you can do a vehicle fine without having to put in all the R&D effort to make, like, a Gran Turismo or something. Like, you know, just determine some basic factors. That's what I did with, uh... Halo Custom Edition, like, you could go in and you could tweak different aspects and make the whole thing go way faster. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see... I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass, not necessarily in that <laughs> order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say... I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. All right, so good. Maine is still on our side. Yeah, honestly, it would be nice to spend some time in one of those watchtowers, watching for fire. Actually, I had a co-worker at a school I worked at, and her daughter actually went to school for it and was going to spend the summer doing that, essentially, you know, living out Firewatch. Okay, okay. Now this car feels a little bit better. Like that Jeep was just way too quick and zippy for what it was. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, just to like spend some time out there. Now of course getting supplies and everything would be interesting. And I'm not entirely a hunter, so I couldn't go scrounging for my food, but... If you were able to somehow supply, you know, shelf-stable foods and whatnot, and then, yeah, I'd spend a good long time up there. Nature, solitude, get some writing done, get a lot of reading done, too. What? <laughs> he just stopped at the top of the stairs there. All right, manuscript page. Vermont. Spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. Weird. Okay. <clears throat> Drive a car. Oh, visitor parking over here. Hopefully, there's no more than three visitors. The kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now.
It was a blue seal now. Well, there were some earlier residents in the area. The true genesis of the town of Bright Falls came with the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company. The opening of the Bright Falls Coal Mine in 1878. Although the work was hard and dangerous, many immigrants, Germans, Poles, Italians, Finns, and Swedes, among others, worked the mines. Hey, yo! Give me some of that coffee. I have found 25 coffee thermoses. Cool beans. I didn't think it was 25 already, but I guess it is. While lucrative at first, the mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The seams were rich, but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. Yeah, that's something I never considered, the fact that they're in the Pacific Northwest, which is known to be volcanically active. They've mentioned Aldrin Lake, etc., but <laughs> never considered, you know, mining over there. Just digging, digging, digging. Lava! With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. Goodness. <clears throat> nope. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all aboard, all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Womp womp. Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello? Ah! I'm going to kill him. I had to get to Mirror Peak. Okay. Oh, what the? It was close. Maybe closer than ever before. Nope, not there. Do I go down the chute? <laughs> oh, glares, lithium batteries. Another thermos. That seems like a very odd mechanism. Hit the button over there, and then it opens up a door here. 
Ouch. Manuscript. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Okay. Uh, what? Holy crap! Just a box full of ammo. Gosh, I'm gonna want to backtrack after every shot. Oh crap. go three flashbangs you shouldn't have Whoops. Whew. That was close. <laughs> Missed something. There's got to be like a ladder or something around here. Oh. That was a doorway. What the hell? Oh boy. The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. What a shocker.
Did I get them all? Car is a little worse for wear, but certainly helped out. A flare gun, far out. Luckily, the car is still here. There is definitely a smarter way to go about all of that, but I felt it was rather successful. I take everything back, we're gonna die. More revolver. Okay. We're gonna keep on going. Alright, we are full up on batteries now. I'm like, wait a second. Gotta hit the climb button so I can climb. Grab thermos and manuscript page. 
Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. Okay. Follow. Whoa. More revolver ammo. More good on batteries. All right. Oh, lever crunk. There was no way a flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. Ah. Gosh, they really have me loaded up. Oh, I guess I was heading the wrong direction. Should really start looking at that mini map for hints. Oh! Oh! I kind of forgot about that stuff. We're still doing good. <laughs> and I guess I do have to head this way then. Hey, your page. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Son of a gun. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Just the fact that the FBI guy keeps dropping the names of writers. Calling him Raymond Chandler or Mickey Spillane is okay, because he did write the, uh, oh gosh, Alex, Alex Stacy? No, no, not Alex Stacy. That's literally one of the loading ready run guys. Oh, Alex, not Alex Murphy. I don't remember the name of his character now. What was the character he wrote about? Ah, oh, totally blanking. 
Alex Casey? Alex Casey. Ah, oh, dang it. I did not want it to default to the flare gun. Ah, oh, dang it. Yeah, he wrote about Alex Casey. Now, Alex Casey was a detective. So, making a joke about calling Alan Mickey Spillane or Raymond Chandler would absolutely make sense. Not so much calling him Hemingway. If anybody would be a Hemingway, it would probably be the FBI agent with the copious amounts of alcohol that they seem to imbibe. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Pump action shotgun? Far out. Uh, you know what? The other way seemed like it was closer, which makes me believe that this way is the correct way. Alright, I'm seriously going to have way too much fun with the pump action shotgun. And then I'll run out of my ammunition and then I'll be like, oh no, I wish I had saved it. Ah! That is so weird. I thought the light would have been like, oh, I can't do it. No, he just came and whacked me anyway. All right, grab all the things. We're good. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. What is that up there? Oh, I guess it was the light distorting. Well, let's go check out that shed real quick. I assume there's going to be items of some sort in here. Oh, yep, there's thermos. Ah! Oh, yeah! More shoddy ammo, flashbang ammo. Let's go! I should be nearly set for anything. I see. That was close.
checkpoint. The dark presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? The graveyard shift may cause cancer. Where is this guy? Unfortunately, I did end up wasting a little bit more ammunition than I intended, but took him out nonetheless. Getting hung up on geometry. The place was dead, a ghost town. Had been for decades, maybe a century. Oh! Jeez. I'm like, what one of those items is alive? Oh, shit. That's a car. <laughs> Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself, angry at Alice, angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. I have no plan and I must scream. Grey Peak Gorge. Originally founded in 1928, the Grey Peak Gorge mining town was one of the permanent settlements the Bright Falls Mining Company built for its workers. The nearby graveyard is a testament to the dangers the miners faced on a daily basis. Most of the men who lost their lives over the years were buried there. A grim reminder, be careful for those who remained. Grey Peak Gorge was abandoned almost overnight when the My Bright Falls Mining Company closed its doors in 1970. Thermos, I hardly knew miss. Oh, eyelash or other foreign object in the eye.
Alright, better. Alright. Continuing on. Gotta get through the ghost town. Yeah, I definitely want to shift over to my revolver. Because I do not want to accidentally use up a flare gun round. I'm going to avoid that because it feels like it's going to drop. Nope, turns out the railroad ties are the... Oh, no. Protect me, level... Oh, great. Ow. Super ow. Oh my gosh. Seriously? Alright, let's keep it going. There we go. Level geometry, that's what'll save you. Thermoth. You got a key. Okay, now, is this the lodge that he was mentioning, like, way back? Oh, yes! Oh, I thought it was going to be Night Springs. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet, and a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of the lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things from my story. They ring true. They fit. Well, actually using the term Lovecraftian. <laughs> yeah, just uh, an unso a sort of unknowable evil. Yeah. Gotta love it. Whoa, hunting rifle ammo and hunting rifle. But do I really want to? I have 32 shotgun rounds and a pump action shotgun. I don't think I'm going to switch to the hunting rifle. Huh. 
<clears throat> yeah, I, when I was younger, I attempted to dabble in some writing, specifically like fan fiction. Um, attempted to write some stories when I was much, much younger, but... Yeah, the first, you know, author to really make me consider doing some writing. Oh, the text. The had sent me a text. The message was full of spelling errors and insults. It was telling me to hurry up. Yeah, the first one that really got me interested in attempting to write was uh, Lovecraft. Just because I had never really heard any of his stories and went through and read them and thought they were pretty cool. This creepy and noble craziness and all sorts of fun stuff. I just found it to be creatively rich. Oh no, these guys again. I mean, everybody's got to find inspiration from somewhere. Oh, what? Where did y'all come from? I will say, when I had my real resurgence in reading uh, six or seven years ago, I got very into reading detective fiction, specifically the stuff of Mickey Spillane, uh, and then his uh, uh, official, um, gosh, I don't know what you would call it, I guess co-writer, uh, Max Allen Collins, who essentially took over completing the next few manuscripts that were partly completed by Spillane. Tunnels go to Cauldron Lake. Good stuff. Yes, Satan? stabbed at my brain. Yay, manuscript page. The hunters were big, thick set men, confident and at home in the woods. They were feeling good, running on beer, ghost stories, and camaraderie late into the night. It did them no good, as they were taken by the dark presence, sucked deep into a darkness far worse than any ghost story they ever told or heard. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, 
yeah, growing up I enjoyed a lot of fantasy fiction. And didn't even really get into science fiction all that much until later in life with William Gibson and Neil Stevenson. But originally, I was all about the fantasy. Uh, specifically, Emily Rhoda with Rowan of Rin and Del Toro Quest. Of course, I read other classic books as well. What ended up happening in middle school, however, is uh, when I got into uh, specifically the Halo novel series. That was my big first foray into science fiction and military science fiction at that. Those are a good time. I'll say that much. Nightingale in the Majestic. Looking behind the closed doors and curtains of his grimy room at the Majestic, the local motel, Nightingale could feel the locals' eyes on him, the unrelenting pressure of their judgment. He forced it out of his mind. For all he knew, they could all be under Wake's spell already. You do what you have to do to get the job done. He took comfort from the bottle in his hand. Please, he thought. Just let me get through this. Okay. Suffering from the DTs. Uh oh, uh oh, oh no. Oh! Well, that's a thing. Can't even find where the tunnel is. Okay. All right. Deeper we go. Yeah, after years and years of solely military science fiction and speculative fiction, I've made my way back into the world of fantasy fiction um, and surprisingly fantasy fiction that has a better grasp on modern scientific theories than look you can get out of there the world's not even loaded in Alan <laughs> I'd have to make my way up this mine shaft in order to go on yikes Maybe the machinery could help me with that um, but yeah, reading the stories of Michael Moorcock, it's a whole bunch of quantum mechanics and multiverse stuff. Which was significantly before its time, which is why I think he's always been such a niche writer. Because people were not ready. He is absolutely the writer for the modern era, that's for sure. Just turning tropes that we know on their head. And then, of course, having a two things, like two major things. Not only... Does he have a good grasp on, you know, the many worlds interpretation with multiversal stuff and multiple versions and aspects of certain characters? Oh, I did want it to go up. He also 
has a uh, a good view on topics like the nature of uh, you know good and evil and a balance to everything where you've got a dichotomy between the forces of law and the forces of chaos you know everything being stagnant and stable or dynamic and ever-changing and a oh I see and a common misconception is that one side is better than the other or that one side is right there is no right or wrong there is a very careful interplay between order and chaos the nature of the universe especially with entropy which also comes up by name <laughs> is going from you know stability to chaos or uh you know order to disorder that is by definition the whole purpose of entropy or the whole effect of entropy and so in many ways Moorcock is a lot more enlightened than uh well the Jedi for sure <laughs> or even um in Kingdom Hearts Pretty much everybody who was a hero was like, oh, we're fighting for the light, 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 light. And then there's only been a couple who really realize the careful balance of everything. Everybody's so interested in getting rid of the darkness, but the truth is there's darkness in all hearts. Yeah, take the good with the bad and do the best you can with it. Yeah, and it's definitely a sign of... wisdom to recognize that great another cable car not everything is so black and white is good people can do bad things bad people can do good things Now, I'm not saying do bad and good. That's another fundamental misunderstanding of the point. Ultimately, you want to do the right thing.
for instance, here. You know, he is a writer. He's trying to get his wife back. Alright, good thing. To accomplish this, he's gonna need to attack some evil infected monsters. Or tainted or touched monsters. Like, sorry. He's gonna have to, you know, delete some folks. That's the only option he's got left. Is violencia. And in essence, or inherently I should say, uh, violence is a chaotic action. It is destructive. Yet it is the thing that needs to be done. So in action, due to pacifism, would be a negative thing. Because he didn't act, you know, someone got hurt, etc., etc. But if he had taken the action, that would have been violent, would have saved a life. Cauldron Lake. The eighth deepest lake in the world, Cauldron Lake is a caldera lake formed by a, in a volcanic crater. The volcano itself could be considered active, but it has not erupted since the volcanic earthquakes of 1970. And even then, the underground activity was comparably mild. Despite some property damage, there were no casualties. Cauldron Lake is one of the most beautiful spots in the Bright Falls area, as well as a central figure in many local folk tales. It is a popular recreational area for area residents. Oh my gosh, wrong button. So yeah, there is no light and dark. At least in the traditional sense of, I'm a good guy, I'm a bad guy. It's muddled shades of gray. checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no sign of the wakes. It was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake. It made no sense. They must have taken a wrong turn, but there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated, Mott stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. Intriguing. This is a particularly long episode. I've literally been playing for two whole hours, and it's episode three. The first couple were done rather quickly. Honestly, I thought it would be like each day, so I thought we would be on at least our fourth quote unquote episode with all this. I mean, this is like a lengthy two part episode. Visiting Rose, running away. 
and then waiting. Like, I feel like this should have been a whole part unto itself with the waiting and then going to the whole thing. Alright, I guess we gotta go in. C, W, and T, Z? Tom, Tom, I miss you, Tom. C, W? Talk to me on TV, Tom, 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 I miss you. Did you write this? Tom, 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 Tom. I curse you, Tom, saying Tom, 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 Tom. Oh, man. That that was kind of cool. Just like you start there, and it's like, oh, I love you, Tom. Okay. I miss you. Did you write this? Tom, Tom, Tommy, Tom, Tom. I curse you. Tommy, Tommy, Tom, Tom, Tom. Alright, I was wondering if I could break the box and see a bit more. I can't even tell if I'm heading the right way or if I just stumbled on an Easter egg here. Well, I'm assuming it might be the right one because the stairs broke. All right, this has got to be correct if... Oh, okay. We can head up through here. I was going to say, there's got to be like a secret entrance in there. What, are we going to fight some sort of darkness kaiju? Okay, used up my shotgun rounds, unfortunately. Probably could have gotten away with using something else. Alright, we're good there. Alright, I guess we're going back out again. I definitely think I'll be calling it as soon as this quote-unquote episode is over. We already hit the two-hour mark, and that's generally how long I intend to stream. That being said, this is a Saturday, and there's no work tomorrow, so I could stream a little bit more this evening. I don't know, I'll maybe see how much longer is left in Alan Wake and maybe we'll pop back and finish that or I'll swap to something else and make a little more progress. We'll see how I feel.
I could see Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. I was close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in her place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Intriguing. Okay, end of the episode. Gosh, that was that was a lengthy one. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get <laughs> copyright struck for this, so I will unfortunately go ahead and skip just in case, on Alan Wake, and we'll watch I'm this. By the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is! Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the Dark Presence before it attacked me. Alan. Shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go, Alan. Whoa! Some of those sound effects sounded like control. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, Alan. Just let go. Go, 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 go.
I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. All right, well, then I guess we will be back at some point soon to check out episode four, Truth. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool today. Uh, very long episode, that is for sure. Um, yeah, if you like this content, like it, share it, subscribe. Um, check out my substack, dematic.substack.com. That's D-M-A-T-I-Q dot substack.com. I write about technology, teaching, mental health, movies, and video games. So be free to check that out. And also check out my podcasts. Just search up Dematic on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you got them. They're pretty much all available there. So until next time, you stay classy, planet Earth. Bye!